Hello again guys, this is the notes in case you missed it on congruent triangle proofs. So before we get started, let's review what the five ways that we can prove triangles are congruent are. So we've got side, 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 when all three sets of corresponding sides are congruent. We have side angle side, and remember that A being in between means it has to be an included angle. So a set of congruent sides, set of congruent angles, set of congruent sides where the angle's in between. Then we have angle side angle, which is similar, but this time we have an included side. We have angle angle side, this is where the side is not included. And then we have hypotenuse leg, and remember this one is only for right triangles but not every right triangle. Okay, so you'll want your dominoes handy for these notes, and let's get started on how we can do a organized two-column proof to prove congruent triangles. So starting with um, number one, we always wanna mark our diagram with our givens and the things we can assume from the diagram or what we're given. This will help us then determine which way we're gonna, um, which method we're gonna use to prove congruence and then we can keep track of it from there. So angle one's congruent to angle two, and then F is the midpoint of EH. So what that tells me is that it splits EH into two equal parts. So EF is congruent to FH. Then also from the diagram, I noticed that three and four are vertical angles, so I know that those are gonna be congruent. So if I'm looking at my markings here, I've got an angle, a side, and an angle an angle, a side, and an angle. So that side is included, so we are gonna use angle, side, angle to prove these congruent triangles. So let's get this down, what we just talked through, into our proof. So the first thing we start with is always our givens. So angle one is congruent to angle two. And that was one of my sets of congruent angles. So I'm gonna put an A out to the side just to keep track for myself that, okay, I've shown one of my angles. Our other given is that F is the midpoint of EH. So from that information, we were able to conclude that EH was congruent to FH. Now, for my reason, I'm gonna need an if-then statement, so I'm gonna pull out my dominoes and look for a theorem or definition that talks about midpoint. And on page two, a point that divides a segment into two congruent segments is the midpoint. So, if a point is the midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. Okay, and that is my set of congruent sides. I'm gonna put an S right here. So we're done with our givens and our assumptions from the givens. From the diagram, we stated that angle three is congruent to angle four because of vertical angles. So if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. And that is my other set of congruent angles. So I have shown angle side angle. I have stated and supported all of my necessary information to be able to say that triangle EFJ is congruent to triangle HFG. And my reason is gonna be angle side angle. Let's practice that again on the next side, number two. Again, the first thing we always want to do is start marking the diagram with what we're given. So RO is perpendicular to MP. So this tells me that I'm going to have two right angles down here. And then we're told that MO is congruent to OP. So I'm going to put my tick marks. Then also looking at the diagram, they share this side RO, and we know that we can use the reflexive property to say that RO is congruent to itself. So this is going to be a side, an angle, and a side, a side, an angle, and a side. So I'm going to use side angle side, my angle is included, it's in between those two sides, to prove congruent triangles. So let's start off with our given information. 
we're given that RO is perpendicular to MP. And we were given that MO was congruent to OP. And that was one of my sets of congruent sides, so I'm going to put an S to keep track. Then, from these perpendicular lines, we were able to conclude that angle ROM is a right angle and that angle ROP is a right angle. And we can put this in the same statement because it came from the same piece of given information. So I was told I had perpendicular lines, so I need an if-then statement that lets me conclude right angles. Lines, rays, or segments that intersect at right angles are perpendicular. So if two segments are perpendicular, then they intersect at right angles. Now, I have two right angles, but in order to put my A statement showing that I have congruent angles, I need a statement saying I have congruent angles. So it's not enough just to say that you have two right angles. You have to go an additional step with another statement and reason saying that ROM and ROP are congruent. And our reason for that is going to be this theorem on the bottom of the first page. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Okay, so there is my set of congruent angles. So I'm going to put an A. Then the last thing we wanted to show was that RO, that shared side, is congruent to itself. So RO is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And there's my other S. So I have shown SAS for side angle side. So I'm ready to state that triangle MRO is congruent to PRO. And my reason is side angle side. Okay. On to the next one. We're told that BCA is a right angle and DCA is a right angle. And then we're also told that ABC, angle ABC, is congruent to ADC. So I've marked this on my diagram. And then looking at my diagram, they have this shared side AC. So I'm going to be able to once again use my reflexive property and prove that congruent. So I've got an angle, an angle, and a side. An angle, an angle, and a side. So this is going to be angle, angle, side. Not angle, side, angle because the side is not included. It's not in between the two angles. So let's get to work. We're going to use our given information. BCA, not congruent. BCA is, got ahead of myself here. BCA is a right angle. DCA is a right angle. And then angle ABC is congruent to angle ADC. And this was one of my sets of congruent angles, so I'm going to put an A out there to remind myself I've shown that. Then our other set of congruent angles were these right angles. So remember, it's not enough just to say that they're both right. We need to go that extra step to say that they're congruent to each other. And we're going to use that same if-then statement from before of if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And there's my other set of congruent angles. So I've got A, A, and I still need my side. So A, C is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And that's my side. So I've got angle, angle, side. So I can now conclude triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle A, D, C by 
angle, angle, side. Okay. We've got one more. And I am going to highlight these two triangles that it's talking about because our picture shows more information than we really need. So triangle TON is congruent to TSR. That is what we're trying to show, that those two triangles are congruent. So I'm given that TO is perpendicular to NP. Now this means that both of these angles here are going to be right angles, but angle TOP is not inside one of my triangles. So I don't need that information. So I'm not going to mark it on my diagram because I don't want to get confused. So TO being congruent to NP tells me I have a right angle here at TON. Then TS is perpendicular to PR. And for the same reason, I'm only going to mark the right angle that's inside my triangle so I don't get confused. Then we're also told that angle N is congruent to angle R and that TO is congruent to TS. Okay. So let's start with our given um, information in our proof. TO is perpendicular to NP and TS is perpendicular to PR. And then from that information, we gathered that angle TON is a right angle and that angle TSR is a right angle. And we haven't really addressed yet which of these um, methods we're going to use. We have an angle, an angle, and a side, an angle, an angle, and a side. So angle, angle, side is what we're going to use again here. So we've got two right angles and we've already used our if-then statement of perpendicular lines in a previous proof. So if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect at right angles. And then we're using that as one of our sets of congruent angles. So we need to then state that we have congruent angles because, third time using this, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. And there's my first set of congruent angles. So we're going to mark that with an A. So that was from my first given. My second given, we still need to say, was that angle N is congruent to angle R. And that's my other set of congruent angles. And then our last given, TO, is congruent to TS. That is our side. So we have now shown angle, angle, side. And we can finally state that triangle TON is congruent to triangle TSR. And our reason is angle, angle, 